Deadly Tarantula Girl coming to you seven miles outside of Austin at the capital of Texas Zoo with the curator, Mr. Michael Hicks. Thank you so much for having us today. This place is absolutely beautiful. Around what year was this zoo founded? So I bought the property in 99, opened up just on Saturdays in 2001 with very little and we just have grown and grown since then. Wow. What were your founding animals? Well, we had mostly very small program animals, kinkajous, some parrots, small mammals. We didn't start to get into the big cats and the hippo and that kind of the camel and that kind of stuff till a little later. Fantastic. What would you say are the most rare animals that you have here on the premise? Well, we have bred 13 endangered species here and the rarest creature we have uh, is probably our Nubian wild ass. Mm. There is DNA work being done on those to determine if they are actually pure stock or not. They were brought to uh, the Rome Zoo in 1929, their ancestors were, but they're extinct in the wild. Wow. And then we have our blue throat macaws, and there's only 400 of those left in the wild and perhaps a thousand in captivity. Wow, incredible. So those are our most dangerous animals. We don't have the money to do rhinos and orangutans, but you know, those two species are much more endangered than rhinos and orangutans. And that's what we're all about, is the conservation of the animals. I can't wait to see those. Let's go take a look. That's Blue, our male, and his mate, Dolly. I bottle-raised her. You never bottle-raise a male, they'll kill you. They have twins once a year. He's quite dangerous. Twenty, thirty years later, they become endangered. There's a thousand in captivity in the United States, 400 in the wild. The Endangered Species Act is one of the reasons there's not more of them because you can't sell them across state lines. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of people don't bother to breed them for that very reason. Right. That we need to get rid of that where it, where it, where it applies to non-native species. It does more harm than good. About two years ago, I got a call from a lady in her 80s. And she says, me and my husband are in failing health and I have a very rare and endangered pair of blue throat macaws in the backyard that we would like to donate. Well, you see how close they look to the common blue and gold. Mm -hmm. I figure, this lady's got delusions of grandeur. She has blue and gold macaws. And I said, okay, I'll come take a look at them. And if they're blue throats, I will take them. Didn't get around to it. Three, four weeks later, she calls back and says, listen, my husband's bedridden. We, he's got cancer. We, you know, we really want these to go to somebody we think will really make an effort to breed them. And I had a show that afternoon just very close to him. I said, okay, I'll come check. Very little modest house. She told me they'd been there for 50 years in South Austin. Real nice big backyard, nicely fenced in, and it had grown up. You could tell they didn't have time to maintain it, but mm -hmm. a nice big beautiful aviary back there, and there was this pair of blue throat macaws. So, did I she ever say how they came into their care? I'm, there's a guy in the valley that has bred them for years, mm. and I'm guessing that's what she got. I don't know exactly because I don't check the nest box mm -hmm. every day, but a few weeks. You know, the eggs are just this big and the yes, babies are that course, big, so it's course. getting close. Surprised how large it is already. To the start, and this is the smallest of the oh, three. Yeah. Then the question becomes, do you hand raise mm -hmm. from here? If you hand raise, you may get more babies, but they may not be as good a breeders. Mm -hmm. But these were hand raised. Mm -hmm. See, this one's starting to... Feather. How yes. dare that human touch our They just want to draw a little blood. That's a... No, they want to draw a lot of blood. <laughs> So those are the two most endangered of the creatures we have. Wow. Let me snappy my nine foot Nile crocodile Ooh. that I raised from a six inch baby. Wow. And uh, we'll meet uh, the rhino iguanas we've set up, which are considered threatened. But they're getting hit hard in Haiti. Got some visitors. Come here. He's 13 years old. She's three, so it's a real May-December romance. Um, in the wild, he would probably already be dead. Um, Binti is Swahili for daughter. Um, we just got a huge donation, and we're going to expand this exhibit with part of that money. He is a yellow-maned lion. 
Murphy is a sub... There's only two kinds of lions. They did the uh, genetic work. There used to be several named subspecies. Uh -huh. Now they realize there's only two. The one found in India and North Africa and the one found in Sub-Saharan Africa. Mm. So these are Sub-Saharan African animals. Her father was a white lion. Really? So she carries the gene. She's very shy. I brought her back from the... She was bottle raised. I brought her back from a zoo in Florida. She just rode in the front seat. She was about this big. Mm. And we go through a uh, Burger King drive through <laughs> and something startled her. And she reared up, rah, 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 and the poor little girl in the drive through th uh, window just ended up on her butt on the floor and everything else. Didn't expect a lion to jump up like that. Come here, Ben T. You're going to come say hi. She's actually mad at me. She had to have a couple of shots oh. via tranquilizer dart gun. And uh, she has not yet forgiven me for shooting her in the butt. These are considered a threatened species. I think they're down to, I don't know what the latest thing is, 20,000, 30,000. We hope she's pregnant. Oh, wow. All right, let's go meet Raja. Ooh, hi, beautiful girl. <laughs> oh, did you decide to come out? She says, no, I was getting you because your back was turned. Oh. Look at the eyes. On yes. Her. You raise money at his bar mitzvah for this. Oh, wow. And so he's getting the name, and his name is Colton Williams. It's going to be called Porcupine Point. That will be an artificial rock work burrow where you can see him nose to nose. Oh, neat. And this will be gone here. We'll have artwork that somebody's making for us right now. Um, to remove that and then turn it into African gray parrots. Mm. And then we may put hedgehogs in here as well. Wow. Um, so. Is there a pair in here? There's a pair in here, but I have three more that will be added to this exhibit as well. Oh my God. Total five. Uh, this one's pregnant. Uh, her name is um, Miss Quilly. Uh, she was bottle raised, but now that she's mature, she doesn't really want to go with me anymore. She will go if I insist, but then she doesn't want to come out of the carrier. Come on, big fella. Do not touch the side of the cage. Okay. He's chuckling, so he's not upset with you back here. He's my boy. Hi, beautiful boy. Don't you try to pity. Hey, big guy. Hey, big guy. He says, put me a little bit. Yes. I haven't went in with him since he was 100 pounds. He'd kill me if I go in. He just, he just would. He's a male. He doesn't know it, but he has an orange female cut. Yay. How old is she? Uh, about six. He's about nine. Tiger breeding is a lot more fraught with danger. I imagine. They'll kill each other. He's in a good mood this mm. evening. Usually he's not quite in this good of a mood. Hi, handsome. Hi, handsome. Yes. This afternoon, I had, I'm doing the big cat feeding demonstration. I have about 30 people up here. And he keyed in on one little boy. Oh. Because, you know, they are instinctively go for the young. And mm -hmm. he was not paying. He just had his eyes locked in. And I said, okay, point out to everybody what it was. And other little kids and stuff, I had them run first, and he ignored them. And then I had that little boy run back and forth, and he just followed me back Whoa. and forth. Just him. That's right. He was thinking of him as dinner. It was a perfect example of how they work. So this donation will do artificial rock work, waterfall and pool, and a new place for him to sit down. He does love his boober ball. World. This is something else where the genetic work, looky there, he's checking for female. Only 3,000 mainland tigers left. There used to be about 13 named kinds of tigers when they did the name. Discover there's only, only two kinds, the mainland tiger and the island tiger. Hmm. Um, so these are no longer considered an integrate between S Siberians and Bengals. Siberians are now considered and Bengals are considered essentially the same tiger. There are minor differences between the two, but not mm -hmm. enough to be a named subspecies. Wow. Which makes sense. So it's more like a locale, the differences between yeah, them. It's, it's more like different kinds of gray banded. When they radio collar these things, a male may, may travel, a, a young male looking for territory may travel 400 miles. Hmm. Generations for genetic material of to be course. go a very long ways if the male's going 400 miles. Mm -hmm. If there's a difference. And it's not. Same for the tigers. There's just one kind of tiger, which actually makes these much more genetically important because instead of being considered a 
dingle, but it's just a mainland tiger. Right. The big zoos have caved to pressure from PETA and HSUS saying these need to be allowed to die out. Hmm. They're not normal. They, they consider them like our albino Burmese pythons. Right. Well, they're wrong. There was always a small but definite percentage of white tigers in the wild since since they started recording things. Mm -hmm. They have great scientific and cultural interest. It's simply a rare allele. Now, one hasn't been seen in the wild since the 1950s because, like I said, there's only 3,000 left. Right. But we feel like it's worth preserving. So the big zoos, when theirs die out, the only place you'll be able to see these is in a place that's a zoo. Wow. That will be it. Feeder big. How many pounds of meat does he Five to day? ten pounds a day. Wow. Leopards are one of the only two big cats that are not in trouble, that their population is actually growing. These, in certain places uh, in India, they're just like our coyotes. They live in the suburbs. Hmm. How'd you like to have a leopard living under your house wow. <laughs> instead of a raccoon? He's the male, Java. He still loves me. I could go in with him. Oh. I don't. We're upgrading their exhibit right now. And this is the female. Her name is Shaitan, which is Arabic for Satan, because she is the bitch. <laughs> but he's a sweetheart. They have had cubs one time. We hope they're pregnant again. How many kittens did they have? Now? Two. Is that a typical litter? Do you yeah. Know? For a first time litter. Yeah. yeah. How old are they? Six. She's not nervous. She's hoping you get close enough for her to reach through and grab you. Oh, lovely. When my little South African friend was visiting, she had on an all black outfit and one of these little stocking caps with little ears. And Shaitan just figured that's another black leopard and it's in my territory. And she did not want her there and she was making it very well known. She stood right there and it was crazy. I, it was funny crazy. Come on. Oh my goodness. Come on, big guy. All right, now you can film. Woo! Wow. So Tank is five years old. He weighs 4,000 pounds. He weighed 800 pounds when I first got him. We were the first zoo in the country to do hippo encounters where you could pay to come back here and feed him. He is trained to open his mouth on command. And this is the signal and you throw the food in. <laughs> those, those lower canine incisors are their weapons. Wow. These things actually kill more people than lions and crocodiles put together, but they're doing it for territorial reasons. <laughs> they don't eat them. They kill big crocodiles and they kill each other. They will kill babies. You have to separate a male out from his mate and their baby or he will kill them. You're waiting for your goodie. He's like, man. What, what is the hell? Coming? His toes. Oh. Hippopotamus in Greek means river horse. Of course, you know my favorite hippopotamus song. You don't? What is it? He came in December five years ago. So my favorite hippopotamus song is, I want a hippopotamus for oh. Christmas. <laughs> Only a hippopotamus will do. <laughs> ah. Oh my gosh. Get that little handful of hay off the floor. Mm, yeah. He is so beautiful. Oh. He is, he is, he is at the proper weight for a hippo. Too many of the big city zoos, their hippos are grossly obese. Mm. But I've only developed about seven. He's so big. Beautiful. And he's actually not that big for a hippo. His father was small. Just don't reach over. Okay. How do you pronounce your first name? Marita. Marita. Like Maria, but with a T. Hey, beautiful boy. What does their skin feel like? Oh. It's very thick. <laughs> it's very, very thick. How easily do they dry out and get ill from not being near the water? I don't know how to answer that. I don't know anybody that would ever keep them that way. <laughs> How you doing? Huh?
Come here, Marita, hold your hand up. <laughs> Ew. This is, see, they're supposed to be trained to come up here. This is called a, their target. I love their little tufts on their ears. So these are ring-tailed lemurs? That's correct. Yes, you don't get to feed down there. You have to come up here. It's called, this is your target. Come on. Come on, King Julian. Come on up here. <laughs> Nope, you've got to get up here. Make Come here. Treats down there. There you go. There you go. So are these two a pair? Pair and their offspring. Look at their eye color. Younger lemurs have yellower eyes. That's okay. a mature pair. She didn't have a baby this year, so we're trying to fatten her up. Do they usually have a single baby? Yes, although she's had twins twice. Mm. Yes, you need to have a baby too. Come here, Mama. Come over here. No, that's not for you. Come here, Mama. She says, I still got a mouthful. <laughs> 5,000 of these left in the world. Wow. can see those little canines on the mm -hmm. upper they'll slice you up I bet. and they're weapons what's their um, diet like in the wild all kinds of insects and plant material and all kinds of stuff is that a scent gland on their chest or that is correct and you can see they also have them on either side of their butt and they jump they Reach up there and rub it, and mm. you see all the oily marks all the way around as they mark their territory. Now we know whose house this is. Is there something wrong with your... Okay, you're just holding it. They're left on. There, there she goes. My house. She says, in case you didn't know whose home this is. <laughs> I don't have any left. She says, and I know it. <laughs> Do they have two different types of fur? Like, do they have kind of a down coat? Yeah, there? I think they do. Of course, the rings on their tails, as it is in all animals with ring tails, is to confuse predators. Mm. You missed out, sweetie. Looks like they're wearing like a jumper suit. <laughs> All right, you ready? Yes. Yeah. Well, Michael, thank you so much for this incredible tour. This place is absolutely wonderful. Tell me a little bit about um, your hours of operation and how people can donate to you sure. if they so feel the desire. We, uh, we uh, are open 365 days a year, rain or shine. We have to be here to take care of the animals anyway, so we have people that come out even on Christmas Day. Um, <laughs> and we do have a place where you can donate via PayPal. Anything that's donated goes towards our endangered species programs. Fantastic. So we can list that link below. And if you're in the Austin area, hello, <laughs> hello, <laughs> or if you're even closer, I would highly encourage you to come and visit this beautiful zoo and support this incredible facility. I had a blast tonight. Thank you for donating your time to us. You're welcome. It was wonderful. Glad to see you. Hope you guys like this one and I'll see you next time.